Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good to have all of you here in God's house with us. Warm welcome also to those of you who are joining us online. We're so glad that you're here. I, I was telling the story uh, last night and the, the person that I told it to said, you really should tell that in church. And I thought, I, I, I got to think how I could work that into church somehow. Well, here's the story. So when I, when I first got into the ministry, I taught at Michigan Lutheran Seminary in Saginaw. And I was a dorm supervisor at that school, living, in, living with the kids, teaching and everything like that. One day I was in my apartment and I hear this huge boom. And then another one, boom. Like, what is that? So I go up onto the third floor. I was on the second floor. I go up to third floor and you walk down the hallway and you see what looks like mashed potatoes all over the hallway. And there's five boys sitting at the end and one of the boys had built a potato gun for his physics project. And he thought, you know, it's a great idea. Let's fire this potato gun down the hallway. And so they're just blasting potatoes all down the hallway and I walk up and I read them right at like what are you thinking what are you doing and typical boy response I don't know I, 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 I don't know what would possess you to fire a potato gun in the hallway of the dormitory and make this mess I don't know I don't know I don't know and as I'm yelling at these boys all of a sudden one of the other dorm supervisors comes out of his apartment and goes hey guys I got six more potato <laughs> like what are you doing he goes I don't know I don't know I don't know you know what are you thinking what are you thinking? What are you doing? Sometimes we, we, we don't think. We just do, right? There's a lot of that with teenage boys. We just do. We don't think through things. Um, but, but really with everything that we have, um, we are managers. We are stewards of what God has gifted us with, whether that be our time or our talents or our treasures. And the instructions that God gives us today, the encouragement that God gives us today is to give careful thought to how you use the blessings that God has given to you, how you use the gifts that God has put into your life for his glory and for his good purpose. And that's going to be the focus of our worship here today. We'll begin with our opening hymn, uh, Rejoice, Rejoice Believers. For this opening hymn, we're going to sing stanzas one through three. Okay, may God bless our worship here today.
Dear friends in Christ, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Although God has been generous and trustworthy, we have not reflected that same generosity and trust in return. With humble and penitent hearts, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. I have not trusted you with my whole heart. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. We sing the next hymn. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and meditation of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from the book of Haggai, chapter 1. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. This is God's word. We join in singing together our hymn, Seek Ye First.
Our second lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 3. In the opening chapters of Revelation, uh, Jesus is speaking to different congregations all across modern-day Turkey. And as he's addressing each congregation, there's a little letter that gets sent to each of those congregations addressing some kind of spiritual issue or problem or doctrinal issue that the people were wrestling with. In chapter 3, he's addressing the congregation in Sardis. And the, the encouragement for them is to wake up from their spiritual slumber. Wake up is what Jesus says. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that my name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears... Let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is God's Word. We join in reciting our verse of the day, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Alleluia, alleluia. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Our Holy Gospel for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning with the 32nd verses. Uh, the news of our forgiveness is a treasure that can never be stolen. It never goes out of style. It, it can never fade away. It's a treasure that we hold near and dear to our hearts, the news of God's love for us and our forgiveness in Christ. Jesus says to you, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. He will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house be broken, to be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the gospel of Christ, our ascended King. You may be seated and I invite the small children to come forward for the children's message. morning. How are we doing today? Good, good. I want you to think, what are some of the amazing gifts God has given to you? What are some gifts that you have because of God and because of God alone? What are some ways that God has blessed you? Yeah, Rory. Yeah, God has given you your house. Now, even though your mom and your dad, they have jobs, right? And they work for that house, it's really, you understand, that's a gift of God, the house that you have. Yeah, Calvin. Food, yes. How many of you got to eat breakfast today? Raise your hand. 
Yeah, got to eat breakfast. There's some good snacks out there after church. Make sure you get some snacks. What else? Food, our house. What else does God give us? What other blessings? Yeah, Brent. Love, absolutely, God gives us the blessing of love. He loves us so much. What else? Yeah. Water, very good, yep. Family, yeah. We have a home, we have family, we have friends, we have a church to be able to worship in, we have our time, we have different gifts. Like, what's something you were telling me you're gifted at? What did you say you're going to do later on for me? She's going to play the violin for us for church because she's taking violin lessons. So, yeah, he gives us our gifts and our talents. And so everything that we have, understand this, everything that we have has been given to us by God. And the best gift of all that God gave us was he forgave us our sins in Jesus. And because of that, what do we want to do? We want to use all of our gifts, all of our time, our talents, like playing the violin, our time being here in church. We want to use everything for his glory and his good purpose because he gives us all our good gifts. Okay? Let's fold our hands and let's thank God for all the gifts that he gives to us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for loving me and filling my life with so many gifts and blessings. Please help me to use those gifts for your glory and purpose because of my thankfulness for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Okay. Nice work, guys. You can go ahead and get back to your parents. Otherwise, Alyssa and Maya for child care are heading on down there. So if you need child care, Alyssa and Maya can take your kid. Um, we are going to be singing our next hymn, and what's, what's the slide for the next hymn? Uh, where Your Treasure Is, okay? The introduction for this hymn is like, what, a minute and four seconds? Okay, it's a little long. I'm sorry. If you don't like the long introduction, learn how to play the piano, okay? And then we can just cover it that way. But uh, it's, just, it's just a little longer. Um, I'll start singing, so when you hear me start singing, that's when we can start singing that together, okay? So beautiful hymn. This is from the new hymnal. You might want to just listen to it as far as just learning the melody to anyway. But anyway, we'll sing that hymn together.
God protect and care for you where your treasure is there your heart shall be all that you possess will never set you free seek the things that last come and learn from me where your treasure God's grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. The words uh, for our meditation today are taken from Haggai chapter 1. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I, I hope, first and foremost, you understand I was just kidding when I said learn how to play piano, right? Okay, so I don't, I don't want anybody's feelings hurt by me saying that. I just, I, I was kidding. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. I should have learned to play piano. My fault. Um, anyway, uh, friends, I, I think many of you know that we just came back from Wisconsin. We dropped uh, Lydia off at Luther Prep back in Watertown. Uh, for those of you who don't know, our national church body, we have um, a, a high school in Wisconsin that the, the focus of that school is to encourage young people to think about potentially being uh, ministers of the gospel as pastors or teachers. And so our 14-year-old, our, our oldest, Lydia, we just got back from dropping her off and uh, leaving her there for the school year. Um, many people, I think, that know our family kind of thought that that was maybe a, a foregone conclusion that we were going to do that. Um, because before I came here a year ago, um, that's where I taught for eight years. So I think a lot of people just kind of assumed, well, yeah, that's of course what they're going to do. But it was not just a, a given for us. This is something that we, we talked about a lot as a family, talked about a lot as parents, had Lydia pray about a lot to see if this was something that she wanted to do. And we got there, and, and it, was, it was great. We were good with the decision to do that. And uh, we met a bunch of her classmates and her classmates' parents, parents from Florida and Alaska and California and Minnesota and Texas, and all these parents who had wrestled with this same decision and came to the same conclusion, like, yeah, are we crazy for doing this? Like, dropping off our 14-year-old baby girl? Are we crazy? You know, and everybody goes, no, it's okay. God's good. Um, like I said, it was not a light decision. It was something that we, we gave a lot of careful thought to. Um, there are some decisions in our life where it, it's no-brainers. We, we don't really spend much time thinking about it, but there's other things that we spend a lot of time in thought and prayer on. Um, because everything that we have, as I said in the children's message, is really a blessing from God. Our time and our talents and our treasures, everything we have, 
are gifts from him. And, and as Paul encourages in the book of Corinthians, uh, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all for the glory of God. So this is something that we as Christians want to take, take some time when it comes to making decisions as how I can best use what God's put into my life for his glory, for his good purpose, because I'm so thankful for the amazing way that God has loved me. This, this sermon theme, give careful thought. If you were looking for a theme for the book of Haggai, um, that, that would do well because this, this phrase is repeated over and over and over again in the book. It's a phrase that's repeated because the people had really forgotten it. A little recap uh, history lesson. So 586, the Babylonian, 586 BC, the Babylonian army, the most powerful empire at the time, surrounded the city of Jerusalem, put them under siege, and toppled the city. They, they pillaged, they plundered, they destroyed the temple. They rounded up all of the Israelites and either killed them or carted them off into slavery and captivity, hundreds of miles away from Jerusalem into Babylon. The people had forgotten about the Lord, and so God brought about this destruction on them. But he didn't forget about his people. After 70 years, eventually, the Persians overtook the Babylonians. And when Persia conquered Babylon, the Persians allowed the Israelites to return back to their home. And so the remnant, this caravan of people, come back to Jerusalem. And they're so thankful that God has returned them to their homeland. They're so appreciative of the 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 grace and the mercy that they've experienced by God, that one of the very first things that they do when they come back is they start rebuilding not just the city, but also God's temple that had been toppled. The people brought forward uh, offerings with enthusiasm and joy, and they were willingly laboring for the Lord, and they build this foundation, and they get everything going. But then construction on this building project stalls. It wasn't because there was some enemy army that had come in and attacked the people. And it wasn't because the people started worshiping false gods or heathen religions or anything like that. It was simply that after 16 years, life had kind of gotten back to normal. You know, that, 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 that whole captivity, that was like so 16 years ago. That whole returning from from slavery. That, it, it was just a distant memory in the past and people had gotten back to rebuilding their businesses and their homes and, and there God's temple sat. Now the, the, the question that God brings forward to the people then in, in the lesson and when he sends Haggai is not, not that God was jealous of the fact that the people had these paneled houses and his temple was still just a foundation in the ground but Really, the attitude of the people was a, a symptom of a deeper spiritual problem that, that prioritizing the, a life with God had kind of gotten put on the back burner. And that's where, where Haggai, we pick up with him this morning. This is what the Lord says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? This house meaning the temple of the Lord. Now again, the Lord wasn't calling his people to, to, to live on the streets until his temple was finished, nor was he, was he knocking them for having nice things. The, the problem was they were living in extravagance while the, the Lord's temple was being neglected. By neglecting the house of the Lord, they were revealing this misplaced priority that, that life with God just didn't really mean all that much to them. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty? Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil and everything else the ground produces on people and livestock and on all the labor of your hands. 
You catch the irony in there? The, the people had robbed God in order to get ahead in life. And yet because they were robbing God, God withheld blessing in their lives. God was calling his children to repentance because not, not, he wanted them to realize they were potentially not missing out on the, the cozy and comfy life in Jerusalem, but the mansion that God had prepared for them in heaven. He wanted to have a life with them here and now so he could have a life with them in eternity. But they had become so preoccupied with rebuilding their businesses and, and building up a lavish lifestyle with their homes that this life with God... And all the blessing that he had given to them had just kind of become an afterthought. And it, it was really a symptom of a deeper spiritual problem. They weren't giving careful thought to their life with God. This is really what I, I want you to reflect for yourself on today. Um, give careful thought. What about us? What about the way that we, we use our time and our talents. What, what, what grabs our attention and our dollars um, consumes our resources. What is it? Give careful thought to that. You know, think about your time with God. If someone looked at your weekly schedule, would they be able to see that a life with God is important to you, that it's a priority to you, that time in his word and in prayer is something that you, you value and treasure? Or, or maybe look at it a different way. When, when the hours are short and time is short, what's the first thing that gets cut? Is it your, your daily devotionals? Or, or maybe a look at it a different way. Are you here today because you woke up and said, yay, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and go to his house. Or, man, I'd really love to have season tickets to the Cardinals, but I just can't afford it. You know, what, give careful thought. Give careful thought to how you spend your time, where you place that. Because each day, each minute, that's a blessing from God to be used for his glory, for his good purpose. Give careful thought to how you do that. Don't, don't waste it. What about the talents that you have, the gifts and the abilities that you have that God has blessed you with? Do you bring forward those gifts with, with acts of service or do you, you not use them to serve one another because you're either lazy or disinterested or selfish or whatever, spiritually apathetic to using those gifts and blessings? Give, give careful thought to that. How can I use my gifts? How can I use my talents for God? What consumes you? What consumes your time? How you, you fill your, your mind? What, what's the, the media, the movies, the music? What, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you, you filling your brain and your heart with? Is, it, is this helping you spiritually? Or is it pulling you farther away from a life with God? What about, what about your, your finances too? I know people, a lot of people feel really uncomfortable talking about how we're supposed to use our gifts of money, but really, Jesus addresses the topic of money and how we use our money more than any other topic in all of Scripture. And if, I, if I'm uncomfortable about talking about how I use my money, might that be a symptom of a deeper spiritual problem? Might I be robbing God? I, these are things that the Christian will give careful thought to, really consider, really chew on and think about. Again, God, God doesn't need your time or your talents or your treasures. God's word will be preached until Jesus comes back. But he still wants us to consider that. How, how, how high of a priority he is in our lives. Is he first or does he play second fiddle? Because God isn't content being put on the back burner. He's not content being an afterthought, nor, nor really should he be. When we give careful thought to the lengths to which God loved us, when we stand at the foot of his cross and we, we marvel at that act of selflessness, when we see how Jesus, Jesus didn't withhold anything from us. He spent everything. Before time began, he had you and me on his heart. And he was willing to give everything, every ounce of his soul and spirit, 
to sacrifice and save us. When we stand at the foot of those two pieces of timber there at Calvary, we see the demonstration of God's love that he, he sacrificed everything for you and everything for me. Everything to have a life with us now and in eternity. We see that Jesus gave something so much more, more than money, so much more than gold or silver or dollars. He gave us his blood. We see that Jesus loves us infinitely. That Jesus wants to have a life with us here and now and always. This is the, the news, that news of God's love that the people Haggai was ministering, they had forgotten. But when Haggai presents this back to them, when he refreshes their minds and their hearts to this wonderful news, this awesome and amazing thing happens. And this is where we pick up with our lesson for today. Listen again. Then Zerubbabel, great name for your son someday, then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the whole spirit, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and they began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. When the people were reminded once again of how much God loved them, what does it say? Their spirits were stirred up. It was that, that call that Jesus gave in our second lesson to, to wake up children of Sardis. And, and the people got back at... The, that's right, we were being apathetic. That's right, we were being lazy. Let's get after it again. Let's return our hearts to God with this renewed zeal. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty because the spirit of the whole remnant of the people had been stirred up. Friends, this is my prayer. This is my prayer for all of us here today. And I, I hope you will pray this today. Lord, stir up my spirit. Stir up at my spirit as I give careful thought to the fact of how much you love me and how much you sacrificed for me. Stir up my spirit so I can live my life and rededicate, repurpose my life for your glory and for your use. Stir up my spirit, Lord. Let us repent of that lackadaisical attitude and lukewarm faith and have our hearts set on fire once again as we stand before Jesus and we see the demonstration of his love. Let that move our hearts to serve and live for him. Give careful thought to how you can do that. Here's the cool thing about the, all the different blessings of all, all different people. Everybody's gifted in so many different ways. And, and, and God yet uses all of these for his good purpose. We were talking, Madeline's going to play violin for us. I was talking to Kendall about all the gears that she's doing behind the switchboard and the soundboard and everything. I don't know how to do any of that. I mean, you look around our, our congregation, there's so many different gifted people in so many different ways that we can serve. Ask yourself, how can I do that? And give careful thought to that. Maybe, maybe that, that, that means that you're going to be the evangelist. You're going to go out and you're going to invite a friend that you've been holding your tongue on. You're going to finally, finally go out and commit and you're going you're gonna to do that. You're going to invite him to church this week. You're going to do it. Maybe that means you're going to sign up for some ministry or some committee. Uh, maybe that means that you're going to go home and reflect how God has richly blessed you financially and say, you know what, we could give a little bit more. Let's give a little bit more. Let's get this done. Let's get this going. Maybe that means that you're going to prayerfully consider, you know, whatever it is you're doing, how, where you're going to send your kids for school, whether you're going to let them be a, a, a light in the public school so they can let their faith shine to this community, or whether or not you're going to put them in a Christian education so that way their faith can be, be fostered and grown with the Word of God. Either way, give careful thought to how you're going to do that, what you're going to do, how you're going to use the blessings that God has given to you as you stand and marvel at the amazing way he's loved you. So let us pray that. Let us pray that the Lord would stir up our spirit so we can live for his good purpose and for his glory because he's so amazing we loved us. With that, all of God's people say amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
we join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. This time we have opportunities to bring our offerings of thanksgiving to the Lord. The ushers will be bringing the uh, offering baskets through, so you have an opportunity to do that. You can also give online if you'd like to go to the website. Um, at this time also, please take a moment uh, to, you can either scan the QR code that's in the worship folder to mark your visit here with us today, or at some point before you leave, fill out one of the connection cards. And uh, actually one of the features on that connection card are ways to get involved. So. Give careful thought to that. Look at that. How can I uh, step in and how can I serve? How can I help in my brothers and sisters at peace and serve God in that way? With that, then, we bring our offerings to the Lord. We continue our service with prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of us, your children. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Let your comforting message of forgiveness in Christ be proclaimed to, to everyone everywhere. Use our ministries and our gifts, our talents, our treasures to extend your healing and hope. And help us find joy and satisfaction in being blessed as your vessels, we jars of clay. Strengthen our families through your word. Give parents a renewed commitment to be uh, good parents with raising the children in their word. Uh, and give our children and young people everywhere the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives and to serve them with joy and thanks. Lead us, Lord, to serve one another and love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we praise and thank you for another day of your grace. With confidence, we know that you will hear us and with faith that you will respond to our good welfare and being. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private thoughts in silent prayer.
All this we ask in the name of our Savior Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In perfect unity with his Son and the Holy Spirit, he is the source, guide, and goal of our lives now and always. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Ushers will be coming through and uh, ushering you up for the Lord's Supper. If you uh, have any questions about the Lord's Supper and you're visiting with us today and would like to commune with us in the future, please speak with me after the service. I'd love to talk to you more about our, our, our communion practices. Otherwise, uh, communicant members, please come forward at the direction of the ushers. May God bless your communion here today.
Please stand for prayer and blessing. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again. And that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome once again. So nice to see all of you here today. Uh, a couple things. 
Um, one thing, there is a sign-up sheet for Lynn and Gordon's farewell, the Curly farewell. There's a sign-up sheet out there. That will be at 5.30 on September 24th at the Ministry Center. So just so we can get planning purposes as we uh, bid them farewell, please be sure to sign up for that and join us for that. Um, also new in the announcements this week is uh, there's going to be a teen night that Heritage Lutheran is organizing. They're going to be having a, a volleyball and, and cookout with uh, devotion and fellowship and everything like that. That's going to be September 30th. Um, other than that, um, we are going to be starting a new Bible class series. We're finishing up the Let's Go uh, one that we're doing for Sunday morning. That's finishing up today. And then next week, we're going to be starting a new series on uh, God's gift of stewardship. So kind of what we talked about in the sermon, how can I use my time, my talents, my treasures, everything that God has blessed me with, how can I use those for his glory and his good purpose? So that's going to be the focus of our study next week. I hope you can join us for that. Um, I wish you God's richest blessings. I hope you have a great week. Let me get to the back and shake hands, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. The third hymn, crown him with many crowns.